Hello, my friends. It's Nick. It's the ASMR nerd. And I hope you are ready for some good old-fashioned nerdy ASMR. Maybe some mechanical keyboard ASMR, because that's what I've got here for you today. And it's been a little while since I did a mechanical keyboard video maybe a month or two, something like that. So it's high time for another. And today we're taking a look at an interesting keyboard for one particular reason. This keyboard is one of the most popular on Banggood.com. Banggood.com is a e-tailer of all kinds of things, but they sell a lot of mechanical keyboard products, components, and pre-builds. And I've worked with them a lot in the past. They've sent in a lot of keyboards for review. And when they asked me if I wanted to check out the Blitzwolf BWKB3, I was like, the what? <laughs> the what? I had never heard of Blitzwolf before, but it seems like Blitzwolf is fairly well established in the budget segment of keyboards these days. And as a matter of fact, at the time that I accepted this keyboard in for review, it was the number one most popular keyboard on Banggood.com. That was if you sort it by popularity. I don't think it is anymore uh, when, as of the time of recording, <laughs> but at any rate, it's a popular keyboard on their website, which led me to ask the question, why? What is it about this board that people seem to like so much? And so I said, sure, sure, send it on over. I will check it out and I will see if the people, the buyers of banggood.com are in fact savvy in their purchasing decision. So it is a very unassuming box, I must say. This is the BWKB3 box. There's not much to see, but we'll see what we get inside once we get to the unboxing. Uh, on paper, this is a fairly appealing board though, so I can see why buyers might be tempted. It is a 75% layout, which is a great middle ground between sort of a compact footprint, but retaining most functionality that people need. It has triple mode connectivity in the form of USB, Bluetooth 5.0, I believe, and 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity. So you should be able to hook it up to all of your devices. It's got full RGB backlighting. It's got die sublimated PBT keycaps in a unique looking profile, which should be very durable. It's got a rotary encoder, which is a fancy term for a knob. People really like those on their keyboards these days, it seems. And it has some other fairly uh, enthusiast oriented features, such as a gasket mount. A gasket mount is good for a softer, more bouncy typing experience and improving the sound signature along with uh, layers of sound dampening material in the board. So there's a lot going on. I can see why it seems appealing on paper. This keyboard typically retails for, I believe, $140, which in my opinion is out of the budget range and into that mainstream keyboard range, I would say, but I've regularly seen it on for as little as $90 US or even a bit less. In fact, I think at the time that this video is published, it might still be on sale for like 88 bucks or something like that. At that price, you definitely have my attention with a specs sheet like that. So, let's check it out. Let's see if the buyers of Banggood.com are making good decisions by going with the Blitzwolf BWK. 
KB3. Let's get to it. And here is the Blitzball BW KB3 in box. And it's a very simple box, isn't it? There's not a lot to see. We have the product name on the front here, the brand in the top right. We have a green and white color scheme. Nothing else on the front. It's kind of loud. Whatever it was. Probably the keycap puller inside, I'm guessing. We have green on the spine, white on each side, green on the front flap, and do we have anything on the back? Yes, we do. We have some information. 81 key on swappable mechanical keyboard. The model USB Type C, 3000 milliamp hour battery, PBT keycaps, Gatoron G Yellow Pro switches, which is nice. This will be factory looped. And uh, some information about the manufacturer. And some certifications type stuff here. And that's, that's about it. Well, all right then. Not much to see with this box, but it does tell us at least what kind of switches this model has. It's also available uh, on Banggood with uh, Kale Box. Okay, that's getting really annoying. <laughs> kale Box white switches, which are going to be loud and clicky. Whereas the later on G Pro yellows are going to be linear and quiet relatively speaking. All right, let's see what we've got inside here. So the inside is correspondingly simple. We've got uh, the board greeting us here. <laughs> we have very little in the way of padding, um, but just a little bit on the sides, nothing on front or back. So this box is basically as small as it can be <laughs> to fit this keyboard. And there's really no padding on top, which does worry me slightly if this was to get, you know, um, bumped or punctured in transit. That could be a problem for the keyboard, but the good news is ours here appears to be in good shape. Uh, so let's lift the board out of here. Somehow. There we go. And underneath we have a very simple flap arrangement. Man, that keycap puller or switch puller is just the loudest thing. There's the offending puller. It is in fact a combined switch and keycap puller. It is the good kind where we have the wire style keycap puller and a nice grippy switch puller. So that looks great and will allow us to swap out switches should we want to, because this is a hot swappable board, of course. We've got a user manual, which features a handful of languages. It gives us the basics. Keyboard combinations, or key combinations for various uh, effect controls on the RGB and such and just other shortcuts. And also pairing for Bluetooth and the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode. The knob is for volume control and uh, the indicator light description. It seems to say what it needs to say. That's good. 
We have, of course, a USB cable, nicely color matched and nicely sleeved with this very actually robust and uh, high quality feeling braided sleeving. Um, no Blitz Wolf branding on the housings, but they're nice and sort of soft touch white, um, which suits the board well. And uh, we've got a nice white hook and loop fastener. Overall, nice feeling cable. It's good to see slightly more premium cable included with this package. And I didn't expect it, but we do have some additional keycaps here. Let's move this box out of the way, shall we? Put that aside for now. The extra keycaps will give us an opportunity to examine their quality. If I can get this little baggie open. So these are made of PBT plastic, which you may have heard me say a bunch of times, but it, it is a, um, a, a high quality plastic that resists uh, shining up due to finger oils and friction over time. So it retains its nice, clean, matte appearance over time. Interestingly, the sides are somewhat textured. The tops of the keycaps are actually quite smooth, a little bit less textured, uh, but they are nice and thick. Look at that thickness. That's great to see. There's no flex there. No, none whatsoever. The legends are dye sublimated, which means the dye is basically infused into the plastic and uh, it should never wear out. There's no way it can really rub off because it's not printed on top. It's infused in. So um, these are nice keycaps. Uh, they are uh, very solid, um, nice and thick, and uh, the legends uh, look pretty good, nice and sharp. The Enter Key <laughs> 2.25U. Uh, the aesthetic, of course, you know, that's uh, a matter of personal preference. If you don't like the aesthetic, then you're probably uh, not going to be thrilled with the keycaps, regardless of their quality, but uh, if you've bought into this aesthetic, and why wouldn't you if you were buying this board, unless I guess you're planning to replace the keycaps, but um, then I think you will be quite pleased with the quality of these caps. We have a handful of extra caps, which are basically the inverse of the ones found on the board, so we can swap out those accent colored caps if we should so desire. All right, and onto the board itself. There's uh, not that much going on with the packaging or the, the pack-ins, so we get to the board pretty quick. But the board itself is pretty interesting looking. It comes in this soft-touch plastic bag, which I always enjoy because they make nice crinkle sounds. Your average person probably doesn't care so much, but this is an ASMR video after all. And here's a board. Uh, so it's got an interesting aesthetic, uh, a very uh, potentially polarizing aesthetic. Uh, on this channel before, you might have seen something very similar to this. The This is Plastic look was also used on the Melgeek Mojo 84 Plastic, which I unboxed and tested out here some time ago. I like that keyboard a lot but it was significantly more expensive than this Blitzwolf board. The aesthetics are not a perfect match. The Melody had a transparent case and some other things going on, but uh, certainly the 
the styling, the colors being used uh, were very much the same. Now, I was told at the time in that video, uh, in the comments on that video, some of you mentioned that this aesthetic is apparently inspired by a fashion designer uh, by the name of Virgil, I believe. Um, it actually dates back quite a, quite a ways, like this kind of style and aesthetic was popular maybe a decade ago or so in fashion, but for whatever reason, it made its way to the keyboard world. I do not know who first made a keycap set in this style, but it caught on and uh, many manufacturers have made their versions of these keycaps. So, um, this is uh, Blitzwolf's, evidently. So the question is, if you like this aesthetic, is the Blitzwolf gonna be as good as the Mill Geek? if you want, you know, that, that styling. So let's, uh, let's take a closer look. So we have here a 75% layout, an exploded 75% layout, which means we have all our standard keys here. Uh, we have our F row fully intact. We have dedicated arrow keys in the bottom right and three nav cluster keys here. In this case, we also have a knob, a rotary encoder, if you prefer. Um, our bottom three, bottom right three modifier keys to the right of the space bar are a little smaller than usual. Instead of the 1.25U, they are simply 1U. It actually says that on each of them. <laughs> These are 1.25. These are one U. Um, and that, of course, allows the arrow keys to fit in here, as does the shortened right shift. So, um, what else do we have here? Let's take a look at this, this here rotary encoder. So, it spins, as one might hope. It clicks. As one might hope, it is metal. It has a nice knurling on the side for texture and grip. Nice brushed top. Honestly, it looks pretty or pretty cash, pretty nice. Um, the rest of the keycaps are in uh, an interesting profile. I forget now what it is called. It's M MDA. I think is what they call this profile, MDA. I don't think I've seen this specific profile before, but I've seen something very similar. So it's uh, got this slightly spherical profile to it. As you can see, the edges are curved. So a little bit of a retro SA inspired kind of look, but the tops feel a bit different and it's not quite as curved as SA. Tops are a bit scooped, and the whole profile is sculpted in rows here for ergonomics. So, um, but the tops are a bit flatter than SA. It honestly feels like a bit of a like a mix between SA and XDA, uh, with these slightly rounded top edges. It's an interesting look and feel. But I think it looks pretty good, and hopefully it feels good too. The main alphanumeric keys are, of course, in this off-white with black legends and then orange detailing. The accent keys are in orange. And then the spacebar and backspace are actually a little different yet again. I'm colorblind, and this color differentiation is too subtle for me to tell what I'm seeing here. Honestly, to me, it looks like a very, very pale mint green, but it's probably not. You all can tell me how wrong I am in the comments. Also, the color grading on the video and the white balance might make it a little hard for you to distinguish as well. But we've definitely got off-white and orange going on here, all on uh, a 
neutral-ish white looking case. Uh, speaking of the case, it's pretty simple. We've got on the back edge a USB Type-C connector as well as a USB dongle, a receiver for the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode. Sadly, it is not uh, labeled or branded, which is always a bit of a bummer. Makes it a little easy to get mixed up with other USB receivers you might have, but at least the color is somewhat, somewhat unique here. Um, and it's got a little spot to slot in right on the back here, which is excellent. Uh, otherwise, it's a very simple case. Nothing happening around the sides, nor the front, except some very subtle Blitzwolf branding here in sort of a silver, reflective silver there, metallic silver. The case does uh, come under a little bit, uh, sort of undercut. So I get a bit of an angle when we're typing on it. Built in a couple degrees, not very much. Um, and on the front here, we do have one little detail. These are the indicator lights for caps lock and connectivity modes and such. There's LEDs under there. I think it looks pretty decent. Uh, certainly it adds a little something to the aesthetic on the front here. Flipping it over. Pretty simple backside as well. We've got anti-slip rubberized feet. We have dual stage pop-out feet if you desire a more angled typing experience. They feel pretty solid, which is nice. We have some information about the keyboard, the model number, some certifications, etc. And we have a pair of switches here. Those switches are the uh, mode select, 2.4 gigahertz wireless, wired USB, or Bluetooth, and the Mac Windows toggle switch. Pretty standard complement of uh, controls and features that we've seen on many a keyboard over the years, but I do like the relatively minimalist aesthetic we got going on here. Uh, for the case, although somewhat interestingly contrasted against the almost maximalist kind of aesthetic we've got going on with the keycaps. So, but I think overall it, it does come together pretty nicely if this aesthetic is something that you buy into, like I said. And it's not going to be for everyone. You know, it's, it's definitely a look, um, and it might not be a look that everyone's a fan of, but... I, I do think it looks pretty cool, personally. Uh, so let's pop off a keycap and let's take a look underneath. So we have here a Gatorade G Yellow Pro switch, which is a, it's a budget switch, uh, but it's a, a well-made one. They're some of the best budget-oriented switches out there. They are factory lubricated, so they are surprisingly smooth for their price, and they actually have a really pleasant bottom-out sound as well. So let's pop that out, take a slightly closer look, and uh, maybe see some of the, the dampening and uh, other features going on here. Now getting this out might be a bit of a challenge. No, not too bad at all. So, we've got our cherry style cross stem here. We've got our transparent polycarbonate upper housing, our opaque white lower housing. These are three pin switches, but the board will accommodate five pin, as you'll see in a moment. So pretty much any Cherry MX compatible clone type switch uh, should go in here just fine. Uh, as I said, quite smooth. Give it a listen. Pretty 
pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I've been impressed by the G Pro Yellows before, and uh, I suspect I will be again. Now I've got a few features to take a look at here. We have, of course, the hot swap socket. We have a black PCB underneath. Uh, we've got a north-facing SMD LED. Uh, we've got five-pin support, so that's always nice. I'm trying to figure out if there's a switch pad under there or if it's simply the PCB. And I think it's just straight onto the PCB there, but I'm going to give it a little poke here and see. Yeah, so no, no padding, no silicone pad or anything, no pour on or whatnot under the individual switch. But uh, it is a gasket mount setup, so uh, we should have a relatively soft, flexy, bouncy typing experience here. Uh, the positioning plate, well, let's pull off a couple more here. But the positioning plate is in white underneath the caps, as we can see here. And I'm just wondering if we can see any of the dampening foam, because evidently there is dampening foam in here. But I'm not really seeing it. Uh, let's take a closer look. No, I'm not seeing anything. So maybe the foam is not between, not between the positioning plate and the PCB, but rather under the PCB. Because normally you'd see it between the keys there, between the switches, but I'm not seeing anything. So um, I'd have to look at the diagram on Banggood, but you can, you can actually, if you go through the link, you can take a look. Um, there's an exploded view of the board showing the various dampening layers and whatnot. Uh, last thing to do before we get to the uh, backlighting and all that is naturally the stabilizers, checking out the stabs. So let's see. Um, I've said it before, I'll say it every time. The stabilizers make or break a board in many ways. You can have all premium components, you know, um, but if the stabs are rattly or they just feel bad, sound bad, your board's going to feel and sound cheap. Getting the stabilizers tuned properly from the factory is a real challenge, but a lot of brands these days are getting close to nice stabs out of the factory. Um, certainly, they're making an effort these days when they really didn't use to. So I suspect these stabilizers will be plate mount, um, Cherry MX style, but I'm hoping they're factory looped and maybe they'll even be padded or something. So let's give them a listen. Pretty good. Pretty darn good. Little tick, but not bad at all. Let's try enter. Excellent. And no tick to be heard. Left shift. Nicely done, Blitzwolf. And the space bar. The most notoriously difficult to get right. A little tick on this end. Can you hear it? There. But. Pretty good, though. So backspace has a little tick on the left side. Return a little tick on the right side. Spacebar a little tick on the right side. Left shift. Nothing really to speak of. Overall, really good. Not the best, but very good. Totally respectable. 
continuing this trend I'm seeing these days of more budget-oriented manufacturers actually paying attention to the stabilizer tuning and experience out of the factory. So props to Blitzwolf for some very good sounding stabs there. All right. Well, uh, with that done, I think it's time for us to check this thing out in the darkness so that its light might shine forth and we can check it out, see what kind of backlighting options we've got. Let's get to it. And here we have the BW KB3 plugged in and looking very colorful. This is the default lighting that you get when you first turn it on. Although by default, it's actually a little bit faster. In fact, quite fast. This is as slow as it gets. Um, and that's actually one of my small gripes about the RGB on this thing, which is that even at the slowest settings, the patterns are kind of frantic. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. So this is the RGB backlight. If you're seeing any flickering on the camera, that's not visible in real life. Uh, it actually looks very smooth, IRL. And I actually thought it looked pretty smooth on the camera as well. But sometimes it's hard to tell with this small screen. But uh, if there is any flicker, that's just an artifact of the interaction between the frequency of the LEDs and uh, the shutter speed of the camera. And that's common. Happens with pretty much every keyboard I test. Although the fact that there wasn't really very much flicker visible does suggest that maybe we have some slightly higher quality LEDs on this board or at the very least that they are not in a frequency range. That's going to be a problem with, uh, you know, common shutter speeds. So um, maybe that's useful to you if you are a streamer or video recorder, whatever, have your keyboard on camera for one reason or another. Uh, so we've got the usual complement of backlight kind of options on here, the usual kinds of controls as well. This is all configurable also in software, which is available for download from Banggood, uh, the product page. Oh, and also... <laughs> Uh, that's another feature, of course, uh, power saving feature. The lights do turn off when the keyboard's been active for uh, a short amount of time, maybe three minutes or so. And um, I think that's only in the wireless modes. I don't recall it happening in the wired USB mode. Right now we are plugged, or pardon me, we are not plugged in. <laughs> this is running on the uh, USB 2.4 gigahertz mode. It, of course, also does have the Bluetooth mode, uh, and those modes are toggled by a switch on the back, as we saw earlier. Uh, for the Bluetooth mode pairing and such, I'll just tell you very quickly, it's simply a matter of holding down function and then holding Q, W, or E. That'll get into its respective pairing mode or its pairing mode for its respective slot. And then uh, simply a matter of pairing it on your target device. It was very easy. They work very well. And that's, of course, when it switched to Bluetooth mode on the back. But we're on 2.4 gigahertz mode right now, and that paired instantly once I uh, plug that in. So, And it works very well. I've had no issues with it in terms of reception, latency, nothing like that. But back to the backlight. So uh, we have, as I said, pretty standard controls. This is as bright as it gets. Uh, it does get dimmer with function down. We have five different levels of brightness, including off. Up it goes. There's max. We can turn off the backlight entirely with the function X, like so. Uh, we can change the direction of the effect with function left arrow. There we go. We can go left to right, right to left. We can go top to bottom, 
or bottom to top. And of course, that's effect dependent. Some effects don't have a directionality to them, but the ones that do have four directional control. Back to the standard left to right. And uh, we can control the color of the selected effect. We can cycle through, I think, about eight different color presets. We've got the rainbow option. And then if we go function right arrow, got red. We can cycle through. I'm not going to try and name the colors because I'm colorblind and that's just a fool's errand. <laughs> but as you can see, the colors are pretty good. They're pretty saturated, uh, pretty, pretty vibrant, and the gradients are pretty smooth. Maybe not the most vivid backlight I've ever seen, but a pleasing and smooth one, accentuated by the matte texture of the keycaps. It looks very nice coming up between the keycaps, um, and the sort of rounded, soft nature of the profile, I think, really helps add this nice softness to the light. Obviously, these keycaps are not shine through, so we don't get the uh, illuminated legends. We just get the light coming through between the keycaps. But what does come through looks pretty good. Clearly, the LEDs are bright enough to, you know, provide some color. And the switches uh, let through an adequate amount of light. We also do have uh, speed control for these effects. As I mentioned, this is as slow as it gets, but if you want to really ramp it up, function plus will do that for you. There you go. <laughs> that's maximum speed. And I think that's actually the default when you plug it in. That is pretty frantic. That's not something I would want on my desktop <laughs> or my desk surface. Just makes me anxious, but on its slowest setting, Looks like there's about five speed options. It's not too bad. I do wish it would go a little bit slower, but maybe that's just me. I like a really slow, zen kind of ripple or breathing effect. We do have all those effects available to us. Uh, if we go function backslash, we can cycle through. There we go. There's the ripple going <laughs> like a thousand miles an hour. Let's slow that down too. Again, that's as slow as it gets, which is, you know, it's probably fine for most people, but I do wish it just uh, would get a little slower, a little more zen. Uh, we've got a rainbow whipping around there. We've got a solid color mode, which of course we can cycle through the different option, color options if we want. We have some reactive modes, no doubt. Here we are actually quite, quite pleasant. This looks like maybe a breathing mode. No, what is this? I don't know, another solid color mode. I thought we just had one of those. Okay, there we're switching through colors. Now it's sort of a slow fade through colors. Now we've got shimmering colors, I guess. The classic shooting rows of colors. Kind of the raindrops mode. Another kind of marquee type mode. Oh, some nice waves. Some more color waves, reactive style. Oh yeah, the kind of come in, shoot out. And the good old snake sine wave, and then some more sort of raindrops, or twinkling stars, whatever you want to call it, so we're bouncing back and forth, and we're back to the wave, the, this wave, not the sine wave, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, that's your standard kind of complement of effects, pretty much what you want, you're going to find there. One other feature this board does have, though, is it has limited per key configurability without using software. So if we go function one, this is one of the presets where just certain backlight keys or keys are backlit and illuminated. Function two is another preset. Function three is another preset. We can individually configure the keys in hardware by going function tilde 
And then while it's flashing, we can press keys to cycle through backlight assignments, the different colors. There we go. And we can do that with all of them. Like so. Blah. <laughs> Blah. However you like. And then when you're done, function tilde. And then that saves that to preset one. Go back to preset two, back to preset one. There you go, our rainbow barf. So there is a easy, if somewhat limited, and a little bit, you know, tedious way to do perky backlighting with the preset colors if you don't want to install or use the software. And of course you could do this on any PC or computer it's plugged into. Um, or even if you just have it paired by Bluetooth to another device, you could still configure the backlight that way. Sans software, which is nice. If you screw it up and you don't like what you've done here, you just want to start again. Function spacebar, hold this for about three to five seconds. Goes blank and then it flashes. One, two, three. And there it is. We've reset all the backlighting. So that is the backlighting situation on the BW KB3. Overall, it's about what you'd expect. Maybe a little bit better than average, just in that I think the LEDs look maybe slightly better than average, but I do wish it would get a little bit slower. In terms of other functions, we do have some stuff on the secondary function layer. We have you know, uh, OS shortcuts and media keys up here under the dedicated F row. And over here under the nav cluster keys, we have other secondary nav cluster functions like end and print screen and those sorts of things. And that pretty much covers it. It's a fairly straightforward kind of board in that regard. Uh, there's no side lighting, under lighting, edge lighting, nothing like that. And everything operates more or less the way you would expect. I run into no issues with the backlight or the secondary function layer. Or, or the wireless pairing, for that matter. Like I said, 2.4 gigahertz mode has worked like a charm. Bluetooth paired and works like a charm. And the battery life has been quite respectable as well. Uh, I've used this in 2.4 gigahertz mode as my daily driver for quite some time now. And I've had to plug it in maybe every couple of days. That's with the backlight on, full brightness. So, not too bad. Alright. Well, now that we've seen that, it's time to hear what this sounds like. I think you're going to like what you hear. We've already had a little test earlier. Listen to some of the keys, but uh, you'll get to hear it in full swing. So let's get on with the sound test.
Well then, well then, the BWKB3 from Blitzwolf. You've had a chance to see it. You've had a chance to hear it. Uh, we've had a chance to really poke and prod and check it out uh, from every which way. And uh, how do I feel about it? Well, maybe more importantly, how do you feel about it? You just heard it. What did you think about that? Personally, I thought it sounded pretty darn good. I have used uh, the Blitzwolf BWKB3 for some weeks now as my daily driver. And at first, I was not terribly impressed. Or I shouldn't say I wasn't impressed. I was just kind of meh about it. Um, and I think part of that maybe is just, the, I hate to say it, but the presentation and the packaging are very plain. Uh, the overall aesthetic with these, this is plastic keycaps. This is something I've seen elsewhere before. Uh, and so, you know, it didn't seem especially original to me. And I have a, a few other small gripes with it. Like, I honestly think the rotary encoder, the knob is like, a little bit weirdly tiny. I kind of wish it was a little, a little fatter, just so I think that would look a little better. I don't know about you, but, but those are all minor aesthetic things. But, you know, when you first lay hands on something or first lay eyes on it, aesthetics are kind of what you have to go on. Um, but, but this keyboard has won me over <laughs> in the past few weeks. Uh, because it's simply a good keyboard. There is very little that I can fault with the Blitzwolf BWKB3, especially at its discounted price point. Um, this regularly goes for $139.99 USD, I believe, on Banggood.com. At that price point, there are a lot of very competent competitors. And I would say at that price point, it's a much harder sell, not because it's bad per se, just because it doesn't stand out at that price point. There's other boards that I would prefer that have um, some more premium materials, use of aluminum and things like that, um, or, uh, you know, a more recognizable brand name behind them even. Um, but I have frequently seen this keyboard on at Banggood for $90 or less. And at that price point, holy cow, this becomes an entirely different value proposition. Like I said, there's really nothing that I can fault about it except for a few of those minor aesthetic quibbles. Um, it feels really good to type on. Uh, the uh, looped Gatoron yellow switches uh, do their job quite well. They are, of course, budget-oriented switches, but uh, honestly, Gatoron yellows are, are excellent for their price point. And so you've got that value proposition here. If you don't like the Gatoron yellows, though, you can get this keyboard with Kale Box Whites, and those are a very different kind of switch, a very clicky switch, but a very nice clicky switch, not even budget really, and um, you can get that for the same price. Of course, it is fully hot swappable with five pin support, so you can put whatever switches you want in here. Uh, the RGB is nicely implemented. It uh, is not the brightest I've ever seen, but it looks nice when it's all lit up, has all the kinds of modes that you would expect. It's been performant. The wireless connectivity has been very good. I've had no lost connections, no uh, dropped wireless connectivity or anything like that. So I certainly can't complain about that. The battery may be a smidge on the small side, but I've used it all day on my desk and only had to charge it every couple of days, maybe. And that's with the RGB on. And the gasket mount implementation 
is very good. It provides a nice, soft, slightly flexy experience, but this keyboard sounds better, I would say, than uh, even more expensive keyboards that I've been checking out here recently. Uh, it has a really pleasant, just a mellow marbliness to it that I really like. Um, and the keycaps feel really nice. I like this uh, sort of soft edge thing that they've got going on with this profile. Um, so, overall, this keyboard really hits it in pretty much every category. Like I said, a few aesthetic quibbles. Yeah, there's a couple of small things that might be nicer if it got a little bit brighter. Um, that sort of thing. But overall, really, really solid. Especially good value at that $90 price point. So, uh, the one thing that I would really like to see Blitzwolf offer is different colorways because I think what's maybe holding this board back, although clearly it's not held that much back because it is one of the most popular keyboards on Banggood, but I think what could see it even further is if we had just some different aesthetic options. I really do think that the this is plastic aesthetic is pretty polarizing. Like some people might love it, but others really won't. And if this isn't the look you're going for on your desk, then you're just simply gonna have to give this a pass. Unless you're willing to swap out the keycaps, which is totally an option too. But if you're buying this board, you're probably a somewhat budget-oriented buyer. And so, um, you know, having to replace the caps is something you might not want to do, at least not right away. Um, so yeah, it would be nice to see this in some just slightly less busy colorways, some darker colorways, if they could offer also some different case colors, like a black case color would make a lot of sense. Uh, maybe a nice sort of neutral gray, um, or some other colors, you know, all I'm saying is mix up the aesthetics a little bit, but the core of this board, the functionality it offers, the build quality are all very good for what is ostensibly a pretty budget-oriented brand, this Blitzwolf, that I had not heard of before today. And uh, it's clear that they are learning lessons from the keyboard enthusiast space, and they are offering the kinds of things that other companies are offering, but they are offering it at a lower price point if you can get it on sale. So again, at the regular price of 140 I think there's a lot of very strong competition for this board, and certainly some others that I would take over it. But at the $90 price point, this is a fantastic option if you want that kind of softer, slightly marbly sounding typing experience, and you're okay with the aesthetic. Um, this is a similar conclusion to what I said about the Mel Geek Mojo 84 last year, which has a very similar aesthetic and a very similar feature set as well, actually. That board I liked quite a bit, but it retails for a heck of a lot more than this thing. So, uh, yeah, in that regard, this, this Blitzwolf compares quite favorably. So, uh, I'm curious to see what we might get from Blitzwolf in the future. Uh, they clearly have the right idea about what consumers are looking for in their mechanical keyboards these days. I'd love to see some more colorways, some different aesthetics, but the fundamentals, the functionality, the feel and sound, all very, very good. And I can see why the Blitzwolf BWKB3 is one of the most popular keyboards on Banggood.com. So, that brings us to the end of today's look at the Blitzwolf and BWKB3. A big thank you to Banggood.com for sending over the product sample that we took a look at here today. If you 
dear friends would like to pick up a Blitzwolf BWKB3 for yourself, you will find a link down at the top of the video description, and that link is an affiliate link, so I will get a portion of your purchase when you buy through that link, which helps support me and the channel and the kind of content I produce. So I appreciate that very much if you go that route. Also, at the time of publication, I do think there's a flash sale on for this keyboard. Might not be active by the time this video comes out, but I think there's a decent chance that it will be. So if you're watching this right when it comes out, and you're keen on this board, click on through and check it out right away because there won't be a lot of time left. If it's not on sale, like I said, it does go on sale pretty regularly. So just something to keep in mind, to check back and see. All right, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you found this informative. I hope you found it relaxing and I and my growly stomach <laughs> look very forward to having you back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Farewell for now, my friends. And would you look at that? It's the part of the video where I thank our awesome supporters on Patreon and YouTube memberships. All of these people contribute to supporting this channel and the content that I create and hopefully the content that you enjoy as well. But there is one particular tier, the Fusroda tier, that gets a very special spoken thank you in every video that I put out. That is one of many perks that can be unlocked by supporting on Patreon or YouTube. You can check out the links down below in the video description to find out what those other perks might be. I'll give you a hint. They involve early access and voting on video topics and things like that. But right now, it's time to read out our Fus Roda supporters. An extra big thank you to Dragoon88, Captain Vanquisher, Ragnar Ragnarsson, Rango Steel, Blacktooth Bob, Jake Luffney, Angel Garcia, and Drummer Brit, rounding out our Fusro Da supporters. Thank you so much to all of those individuals for their kind support, and to everybody here on the special thanks page for their generosity and support of what I do here. Once again, if you're interested in becoming one of these very cool people, you can do so by checking out the links down in the video description and unlock some fun exclusive perks while you're at it.